Greetings, my dear friends. You are on Ozzy MMA and Atrius Online Academy YouTube channel. And today we're going to do an analysis and a fight breakdown, one of the most classical matchups. A great striker, Mr. Turner, versus a great grappler, Mr. Gamrot. Guys, this is going to be insane breakdown because so many little details were shown in this matchup from both athletes. One as an attacker, as a person who's trying to assert grappling, and the other one as a person who is on the defensive side and reacting to those grappling attacks. Let's do it. Boom! All right, the first exchange. A classical distraction with the overhand shooting into the hips. Cameron runs through changes the angle, beautifully brings Jalen's hips to the ground, and here where the magic begins. Let's stop for a second and reverse this action backwards. All right, so Gamera does one of the most classical shooting distractions where he throws that overhand, the opponent lifts his hands up, leaves his legs exposed, and Gamera shoots right underneath that defense right underneath those punches or the response that the opponent has. Let's take a look. He runs through and first thing he does is the traditional approach where after the shot he lifts his head up throwing the opponent away from his head. As you can see it here he drives this way. Jalen was able to quickly displace the pressure and put so much weight on Gamrat's head Gamrat, without stopping his shot quickly, was able to redirect his force into cut on the angle and bring Jalen's hips to the ground. Now, please watch how Jalen, the moment he hits the ground, very first thing he does is he keeps his shoulders above Gamrat's shoulders. This is very important principle for a person who's defending the shots to have constantly maintain your hips ahead above your opponent's shoulders and ahead of your hips by taking your hips away from your opponent. Jalen moves back and changing his hips away from the pressure one side and having a strong post with the fingers pointing away from his opponent. Lifting his hips, being mobile, look how beautifully he switched from one hand post into the second hand post. I love this part. This is excellent way to constantly keep your hips moving and making sure you're not allowing your opponent to settle heavy on your hips. Same way as Jalen adjusting from one move to another, look how beautifully Gamrat was able to switch his hands from the legs to the hips to maintain his top pressure. Both of the athletes performing beautifully over here. Now look, Jalen is using that powerful post using his legs to thrust his hips into his opponent for Jalen's, uh, for Gamrat's leg to get busy, heavy on the ground so Jalen can have an opening in this area to take his hips out. Let's see if he's able to succeed in that. He's going for it, Gamrat is staying heavy on the waist. Jalen drops when he felt that that side wasn't working, he instantly switches to another side now. This was incredible work by Jalen to stay active and maneuvering your hips on one side, the other side, and being resilient with his plan. A lot of times, people fail at their defenses from the takedowns, not because the moves weren't good enough, it's just they weren't ready to keep trying, keep trying the move, or adding adjustments to that move. One try and a failure, if you give up on it, you're gonna have a big problem wrestling. Wrestling is about constantly adjusting to the little problems that occur during your action. If you shot for the legs, they sprawled, you switch into single. They defended the single, you switch into the back. You see, it's a chain reaction from one to another. And that's what both of these athletes are performing in this position. They're going. Gamer was able to succeed on pinning the hips down. Still, Jalen is understanding. Gamrat, in order to keep Jalen's hips in place, has to invest himself 100% to it and use his hands to control those hips. Jalen's hips are so active that if Gamrat lets at least one side go to chase for the wrist or to try to strike, Jalen's hips 
going to fly out from that position. Hence, now it's a dilemma. Do I hold down to my opponent, keeping his hips down, or do I strike him? Which one is it? And this is good scenario for Jalen and not so good for Gamrat. Uh, the way how I teach my athletes, whenever they find themselves in a position that Gamrat's in and your opponent's hips are so active, opposed to being stick to their hips just with the hands, I teach them to use their legs as well. Actively trapping their feet, create them more problems for your opponent to have a base, to stand tall and to move their hips. That's one. Two, when you cannot control the hips because it requires so much energy, you switch to the feet and you raise the feet above the shoulders of your opponent, your opponent ain't going nowhere. It's regular body mechanics, regular physics. I'll actually show uh, special instructional techniques on that uh, subject, but let's delve back into this and continue breaking this down. Both of the athletes remaining calm. It's the beginning of the fight, the first two minutes. You can see how each waiting for somebody to make an error. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Gamert was trying to use his leg to step over Jalen's leg. He's finally utilizing the moment, the, his position to add his legs into the action. Jalen intelligently moves to the wall, keeping his shoulders high, his head above Gamrat's head. Gamrat's trying to get his head higher to bring Jalen's shoulders to the ground. Jalen's doing a good job constantly keeping his legs tight. Head above Gamrat's head. And keep it, look at, look at, look. This is what I've been teaching. Oh, the moment when he shows thumbs up. I was telling him what to do. He's like a coach. I know. Uh, if we reverse it back a little bit, please. Take a look at this. The arm is posted and the fingers pointing away. This is, this may seem uh, such a small insignificant detail to most of the viewers. However, those who understand the protocol of defending yourself against the cage, you know the importance of turning your fingers away from your opponent, how much that does for your stability and how much that invests into defending yourself from the wrist traps, from the handcuffs that your opponent will be trying to get you in while he's on top of you. Continue watching. Jalen keeping himself calm. He is aware of what's happening. He just controlling himself, not exerting so much energy into fighting head to head with a very tough grappler. He's finding his moment. He's waiting for Gamrat to move. Gamrat is also being very intelligent trying to find his moment. However, Gamrat is not doing too good of a job using his legs to trap Jalen's legs. In this scenario, I would make sure that Gamrat was able to utilize his legs a little bit extra so he can free his hands and start reaching for the neck of his opponent to bring his shoulders down or start trapping the hands to break the uh, foundation of Jalen to get his shoulders to the floor so he can continue his pinning techniques. Here we go, Jalen using a few strikes. He's trying to bring the head to the other side. I was yelling, don't do it, turn the other way. And finally, he gets his hips back to the wall. And after a few trials, hopefully he's gonna realize that we gotta go to the other direction, bringing the head down. Because the, the reason why I didn't want Jalen to go this way because the posture of Gamera. Camera has such a strong posture in this scenario that you will be incredibly challenging to bring his head this way for Jalen to defend himself in this direction. However, however, if Gamrat's head was somewhere here, it would be great for Jalen to use this hand to push Gamrat's head further down to the ground. Use that push to get your hips free and get himself out of that position. Now, here we go. He's getting this knee closer to the wall, then he's gonna have to fight to free this leg, gotta maintain that wizard, and gotta keep this hand posted heavy to the ground. Mm-hmm, we get in there, excellent. The leg is free, it becomes a powerful post to get up. Excellent, and Jalen is out. Now, my friends, there was such a textbook moment happened in that scenario where Jalen got himself back on the feet, He's still receiving a tremendous pressure from his opponent, and his opponent has a waist control, meaning two underhooks. Jalen has a wizard. Both athletes are ready for 
even smallest errors from their opponent to get their successful move. We practiced with Jalen, and I practiced this with so many of my students, that in that position of two underhooks, you're maintaining calm, you're protecting your legs, you're protecting your hips, maintaining the space, and the moment you do enough for your opponent to open that hand either to go for transitions or to strike you, you get a collar control, creating space, freeing your hips, and boom, delivering devastating damage to the head and to the body of your opponent. Take a look at this, how Jalen performed this beautifully. And he performed, as I called it, from the corner. It was, it was such an excellent moment of a coach and a student relation during the fight. So he's maintaining, Jalen's using his shin to keep Gamrat's hips far, further away because for Gamrat to perform a powerful thrust and throws, he needs to make sure his hips are into it and he's able to utilize the hip thrust to lift, to swing his opponent side by side or up. And now, Jalen is creating strikes. He's, he has the foundation of the base and using the other hand actively to seek new openings or create diversions. Gamrat was doing a great job trying to step over that leg, but Jalen keeping this leg very active and he's maintaining sensitivity, feeling any kind of vibrations in, in the hips of his opponent and those vibrations will telegraph the next move of his opponent. And he's using that to know what's gonna happen next, to guess, okay? And here you can see I'm calling for the move. Jalen, my man, it's time to do what we practiced. And look what's going to happen. Post, strike, head, head, body. This was a textbook. The only thing I wished was the kick wasn't done with this leg on a moving away opponent, but the kick was done with this leg to meet his opponent with his movement. Let's watch this again, my friends. Look, the hand is opened. Jalen controlling the hands. Now he's going to take his hips out, turn facing his opponent, not escaping the position, not running away from his opponent, but facing his opponent, getting a strong collar grip, pushing away, and the damage begins. Watch it again. Hips are out, the control is there. Now, most of the grapplers used to it that when someone takes their hips out, they escape, they run away. Gamer, I don't think he was expecting this. Knee strike, punch, punch, boom. What was that? Four strikes combination, moving forward against the guy who was just putting pressure on you and asserting his wrestling on you. This is excellent. I encourage everybody to have this mentality that Jalen demonstrated to us. Right off of defensive moves. Don't rush to go back to neutral unless you need a little reset psychologically or physically. You're so fatigued, you need few breaths. If you're still in the fight, stay in the fight. Don't escape. You defend it in that gray zone when your opponent needs to reload his attack, you put pressure back on him. And that was beautifully done by Jalen Turner. This next exchange is a classical error of so many strikers. Look what happened. Oh, let's reverse this. So, Jalen throws an excellent combo and clips Gamrat. Gamrat drops, but he is a powerful wrestler, grappler, who's been wrestling for so long and reacting to a drop is shooting back. That's what the grapplers do. Jalen, under the pressure probably, or being overconfident, didn't protect his hips and just thrusted forward with the fury of strikes and look what happens. Gamrat instantly brings his shoulders ahead of his hips to gain a stability, shoots for the legs and he's going to fold his legs underneath him to gain a rolling techniques to redirect Jalen's force forward. Jalen, on the other hand, leans over too far, keeps his knees bent and his hips behind his shoulders and knees, which was supposed to be the opposite. Knees and shoulders were supposed to be behind the hips and the hips were supposed to be thrusting. The posture, if you can see on this video, was supposed to be this way, just like so. 
However, Jalen made an error. He allowed himself to be overextended to that direction, as you can see. And Gamrot, he finds the way out and gets Jalen's hips to the ground. This is a very important thing for so many athletes to know. It doesn't matter if you're a striker or you're a grappler. To my knowledge, to my expertise, if you hurt somebody, still protect your hips because the first thing that they want to do is grapple to take their time to recover. You hit somebody, they wobble, control yourself, maintain the distance, keep striking them. Unless you want to play around and go in, just go fury, you don't care if they grab your hips or not. Okay? I'm not saying doing one thing is absolute or doing the other one is absolute. It's really up to what you want to do. Many different ways work. However, high percentage and strategic approach is maintaining your distance, keeping your striking distance after you wobble somebody, not to rush, not to exhort so much energy on them right away, to keep, keep breaking, keep breaking, keep creating more cuts on your opponent for them to break down completely. All right, take a look at this. Jalen find his way back to the cage. He's doing a good job on posting the hand. However, Gamera didn't notice that Jalen's back was exposed. His feet were lazy on the ground, and Gamera could have stepped back and continue flanking his opponent. In this scenario, Jalen was supposed to take this knee to this position, use his feet to capture the legs, or even this leg could be used as a trap behind the knees. If he used his shoelaces, boom, right here, he could have created some kind of elevation of the knee that would allow this leg, Jalen's right leg, to be out over there. There are so many things could happen. Another thing, big error from Jalen was keeping this hand over here. This hand was supposed to be towards the armpit, towards the far armpit, pulling his opponent downwards in this direction to constantly heavy Gamrat's leg so Jalen's hips can travel to the wall. Nevertheless, this is the action that's happening. Gamrat is focusing so much on staying straight. He does a good job reaching for the arm. However, reaching towards the elbow is not too sufficient. You're supposed to reach towards the wrist. The arm is much stronger over here to be pulled rather than here. Jalen recognizes uh, Gamrat's stationary action and he quickly elevates his feet and fighting to get this leg to the wall. Finally, he reaches back for that wizard, adjusts his hands, and very well done getting that knee to the wall. So much exposure here. I talked about this in one of my instructional videos how there will be moments when you will have to give up few strikes. You will have to give up some of your energy to get out of the bad position. This is a perfect scenario. Unfortunately, uh, if things were done correctly, uh, Jalen wouldn't be exposed that much. Nevertheless, he had to give up a little bit to take so much. He took back good position. Take a look at this. Jalen eats few strikes. Simultaneously, he adjusts himself, puts pressure, does diversional strikes, keeps himself sideways and his hips away from his opponent's hips and here by dropping his weight lower he gets that control you see the arm was there pushes himself away and instantly moves forward great job great job by both athletes that was excellent exchange next exchange excellent shot by Gamrat. even though there was no setups or anything still he got far enough into the hips Jalen instantly reacts by splitting his legs wider. This is a very important thing during a sprawl. Don't sprawl straight with your legs almost parallel to each other. You've got to split them feet wider open to get a stronger base, a triangle-like shape. He's turning into the head of his opponent, trying to bring the head down. Gamera does a great job pushing his opponent with his head, navigating him to the ground, then adds a lift, drives his legs forward, Excellent job by bringing his opponent down. One of the things as a grappler one must have, the moment you enter into the hips, do not stop your legs. Your legs got to constantly drive forward into your opponent, sometimes around, sometimes cutting under, sometimes quick cuts of the corner. Nevertheless, the feet doesn't stop. 
Again, Jalen does a great job with the crab walk technique, pushing himself back to the cage. Gamrat this time trying to cut the angle. Jalen is keeping his long leg knees high. Uh, in this case, I would even call this a tarantula walk. <laughs> Excellent. This also you will see uh, in my instructional videos how Jalen was protecting his wrist every time Gamera went for that wrist. Jalen was doing a circle of motion to post that hand. This technique will be uh, explained in my instructional video that's coming out. You guys will see it's a very interesting technique. Constantly pummels, controls, posts that arm, doesn't allow Gamera to bring his shoulders to the ground because that's when the big trouble will happen. Taking his time, it's the third round, both athletes are relatively fatigued. In this scenario, let's see how Jalen is going to pop back up on his feet. All right, Jalen finding the thrust to get that knee to the wall. Excellent job. Throwing the distractional strike, getting himself back on the feet as usual, putting the pressure on the shoulder of his opponent, fighting with his hand to keep this hand busy, you see, throwing those strikes. Those strikes may not be damaging as uh, you would like. However, they're a great investment into getting some kind of reaction from your opponent to get his hands from grappling into striking or defending so you can get your hips free. Jalen maintains the pressure, keeping his hips. Oh, excellent job by both of the athletes. Watch this again. Gamera is switching direction to go for the throw, but look what Jalen did. Watch, watch his left leg. The moment he sensed the throw was happening, he did big overstep and loaded his opponent down and he let go. Please note this. If Jalen held on to his opponent, he wouldn't have base and Gamrot could have turned him all the way, but Jalen let go and braces himself on the ground to get a base. Gamrat as a professional uh, grappler who, who spends so much time on the mats instantly reacts to the failed throw and switches himself into the back take, as you can see here. Jalen, on the other hand, uses his hand to quickly cover the flanking of uh, his side, goes for a wizard, and now Jalen's goal is to get this leg posted here so he can free this leg out. Let's watch. And that happens. He puts pressure into his opponent, putting shoulder to shoulder. Get himself back on the feet, closer to the wall. Lifting the grips high to his armpits because if it's on the waist, it'll be easier for Gamera to lift him and throw him. Lowering his hips. Swifting one side to the other side. Keeping his hips away, maintaining the pressure. Both athletes are exhausted from all these exchanges. And let's see who's gonna get the advantage off of this position. The next exchange, Gamera does again the distraction with that overhand. However, this time Jalen was prepared. He didn't react to it so much. He noticed that it was a fake one and he met his opponent with the knee. If he was a few inches high, it would hit the chin. However, it hit right into the chest of his opponent. Gamron pushes through that knee strikes, attacks the hips, and Jalen does an excellent job defending. This time, Jalen splits his knees wider, attacks the head, and constantly bounces his feet with the force that Gamrat applies forward. As he does that, he switches his opponent's head to the side and a beautiful job getting that wizard, taking the legs out and putting pressure on Gamrat for him excellently to defend his hips. Now look at the posture, look at the shoulder position. Before his shoulders were here, Gamrat was able to drive to finish the takedown. This time he slid all the way down. Gamrat received tremendous pressure on one side of his shoulder both athletes quickly react and they're back on their feet. Uh-huh, and these were one of my favorite moments of this match in terms of studying, analyzing. It was a match full of action. I was blessed to be ringside 
coaching one of these athletes, observing this fight, working on this fight, and learning so much from this exchange. I am sure both of these athletes got so much better from this fight because this classical exchange of mastery of striking and a mastery of grappling colliding together will leave so many marks on fans of mixed martial arts in the emotional side and into the intellectual side because you can learn so much from these exchanges. This match was non-stop action. My friends, follow my YouTube page, subscribe, it's Ozzy MMA. We're going to share so much knowledge from our Atrius Online Academy. This way we'll be able to reach tremendous amount of people all over the world. I'm receiving a crazy amount of messages and DMs, people asking me from different parts of the world to learn something from me, to get more knowledge. This now will allow me to reach to every person out there who was just like me living in a small village, having so much dream and fire in his heart, to have ambition to drive yourself towards your goal. Those people now will be able to take a look at the world-class techniques, learn, and those who are already professional can watch this and take their levels much higher and become more successful. Thank you so much, and I will see you soon. Boom.